Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Dear students I am Dr Kurram Shahzad and today we are going to talk about Cress and Levon's model that is known as multi model discourse analysis Since we have already talked about Fair Clough we have talked about Van Dyck's model we have talked about Ruth Wardock's discourse historical approach today we are going to talk about multi model discourse analysis so here we have got word multi which means multiple so it means that we are going to talk about different kinds of modes which are utilized by different authors by different speakers when they are producing text or talk for example we as i have just told you that it considers how text draws on multiple modes of communication such as pictures films video images sounds and all of them they work together to produce discourse we are living in the 21st century and here we come across discourse which is full of modes when multiple modes are produced all these modes they contribute to the meaning making process since earlier on in our other approaches that we have talked about we were focusing on text or talk no doubt text is composed of sentences it has got words but at the same time these days when we go on internet pages or when we open up a magazine or when we read a newspaper we come across that there is visual data there is text which is there and sometimes on the web pages you are supposed to click on a button and then some kind of oral data okay it will be played so it means that we have got multi modal discourse discourse which is composed of different kinds of modes earlier on when people they talked about modes for example in text we have got narrative mode we have got expressive mode we have got argumentative mode or we have got persuasive mode but when we talk about multi modal discourse analysis here text or language or words on the page they are just one mode then sound or image or video they are the other modes which are utilized by the author in multi modal discourse analysis for example people analyze print genres as well as web pages film and television programs it considers how multi modal texts are designed and how semiotic tools such as color framing focus and positioning elements they contribute to the making of the meaning much of the work in multi modal discourse analysis draws from halliday systemic functional linguistics you should remember that halliday says that language is a social mode that language is used in the society remember film images sound they are also social modes they are also used in society so language is used here along with other resources semiotic resources such as gestures images or music that people use to communicate or make meaning with each other halliday describes three types of social meaning or he also calls them meta functions and all of them they work together simultaneously in the use of or in the production of language for example there is eta ideational meta function which means what the text is about there is interpersonal meta function which means that what is the relationship between or among the participants who are producing the discourse who are talking and then there is textual meta function that how the message is organized so of course message is organized with the help of words with the help of phrases clauses and sentences 
all of them they work together and they produce text and in the text there is the author who is the producer of discourse and there is a person or there are people who are being addressed in that discourse because no one speaks in the air if there is no one how can communication go on so if the students are in the classroom teacher is producing the discourse if the readers are there to read the novel to read the text or the poem the authors they are producing the text if the people are in front of the leader so political leader is producing the text the use of multimodal discourse both establishes a proximity to the events and engages people in the events this is very important to understand if you remember the incident of 911 we were sitting homes and the incident happened in the city of new york okay and terrorists they attacked on the towers and they destroyed and it was a multi storied building now we are living in pakistan we are staying at home and we are watching bbc or cnn and the images are being fed to us images are being you know sent and we are consuming those images and when we are consuming those images where people are dying where people are in trouble where people are crying where kids are crying of course we feel that we are there where the incident has happened we feel that we should help them we feel that we have the same feelings of pain that they are going through we feel that we have not only the mental pain but also the physical pain that they are suffering but at the same time we are powerless because we are very far from them same is the case so far as the incident of aps is concerned in pakistan the terrorists who attacked the aps school system and they killed the innocent children and then while sitting at home we started to consume those images which media was displaying at that time we felt very bad about them we felt as if our own kids were dying we knew that these kids were studying in the schools we knew that these kids were there to get education but these terrorists they attacked the kids and they killed those innocent children and their parents they were in pain and we felt their pain so what happened though we were sitting at home but while we were consuming those images along with the data that the reporter was speaking so they were making use of multi model you know multi modalities they were making use of discourse which was not only telling us about the incident but they were also showing us that how the whole event it was going on we felt very near to them we felt that the proximity okay it was finished between that event and us we feel that we were there and we were feeling the same kind of pain and that incident engaged us that incident engaged us mentally and physically and all our feelings all our things okay they they were with the those students who were suffering at that time so it compresses distance and brings images and experiences into people's home the this moves the viewer from a position of spectator to a position of witness of the events so of course when media shows all these things we feel that we are there we feel that we are being there at that time the multi model of use of discourse is as much a feature of print genres as it is of television genres the presentation of women in magazines for example relies not just on words on the pages but as much on the image that are accompanied by the words yes whenever we open up make magazines whenever we 
try to understand or read the newspapers, we come across that there are women on the pages of those magazines and newspapers. And these magazines and newspapers, they make use of multi-modalities to produce discourse or text. So you will find that there are different kinds of colors which are being used by the newspapers and women and their bodies particularly are being displayed and the kinds of clothes that women wear and the makeup that they wear, okay? And then the person who has taken the picture of that woman, all these things play a very important role. All these things, they convey meaning to us. And all these modalities, they are working together to produce meaning. So Thornboro argues that print genres such as magazines are not just selling magazines to the readers. It also talks, it, it is selling values of independence, power and entertainment. Yes. So women, they are, sorry to say, but this is just the analysis that I am sharing with you. Mostly, you know, societies, they are patriarchal and women, they are being displayed through their bodies, not through their intellect. So women, they know all these things, okay? But this is how these people, they make use of women bodies on the pages of the magazines and newspapers. So the kind of clothes that they are wearing and the kind of places that they are going, they are showing that women, they are very much independent and they are source of entertainment. So even these days in our media, we see that even when there is an advertisement of, uh, of a car or of a shaving cream or of a, you know, brand that we use to shave our, uh, you know, shave ourselves, uh, Bluetooth, for example, Gillette Bluetooth. So you will find that young, attractive and beautiful women, they are being used in those advertisements. So their body is used, not their intellect. So, of course, people have already carried out, uh, you know, multimodal discourse analyses of such type of advertisements where they have given their findings. For example, there are, uh, you know, uh, advertisements like Fair and Lovely and these days its name is changed, okay. So, Glow and Lovely. So, again, I will be showing you the picture. Uh, half girl is shown that she is very beautiful, fair colored, white and half is shown that she has got dark complexion. So, once you start using that cream, so after three or four weeks, you will find the result. Here, it is very important that we understand again the speech act theory. In pragmatics later on that I intend to make my videos very soon, we will be talking about speech act theory in detail in each and every kind of speech act that we are uttering, that we are speaking, that we are writing, whether it is assertive, imperative or ex uh, expressive speech act, okay, it has got three forces. It has got locutionary force or locutionary act. It has got a locutionary force and it has got perlocutionary force. So the intention of the advertisement of Fair and Lovely is that they want to sell their products to the people. So it means that the language that they are using and the kind of pictures, shots or scenes that they have created and the kind of advertisement that they are displaying, that they are telecasting on media, it has got a locutionary force to convince the people to buy their product. So once the people, the addressees, they are convinced, they go to the market and they buy it, so that is the perlocutionary act. So once the people, they are convinced, they get up and they act upon that and they buy that product, so this is the perlocutionary force. So we need to understand that this is how newspapers and media or, you know, uh, internet pages, they make use of different kinds of modalities. 
The social relationship between an image and its viewer is strongly influenced by whether the subject in the image establishes eye contact with the viewer or not. Yes. So we will have to see that how the image of the person is created, how the shot is taken. Is it that the person is looking straight, straight in, into the eyes of the viewer or the viewer is looking down, showing respect or what? All these things, they have got their meanings. Each of possibilities could be seen as an example of mood where the eye contact could suggest a demand, whereas no eye contact might suggest an offer. The point of view or perspective of the image is also relevant. For example, a horizontal image suggests involvement as the viewer is on the same level as the subject of the image. A high angle shot might suggest superiority and low angle shot may suggest respect. Now coming back to political leaders in Pakistan, these days, you know, political parties, they know how to produce text and talk. So they are making use of multimodalities in their speeches, in their, you know, dharnas that they are doing in Pakistan. So whenever the political leader is speaking, is talking to the audience, is delivering a speech, not only he speaks, but also there are DJs and they are producing music and they are producing songs telling that they are very faithful to Pakistan, telling the world that they, he is the leader or she is the leader who only thinks about Pakistan, who only thinks about the people. So they will make use of music. They will show you different pictures. They will show you certain scenes of their opponents, that how they were performing, that how they were saying, or how they were talking about certain event at a particular time in past. So they are making use of multimodality. Okay, so this is very important that we look at the kind of perspective, the kind of angle the you know media is showing us. Because when the cameraman is showing from one angle, so it means that from other angles, you cannot come to know what is happening. And if he's showing from this angle, again, you don't know what is happening the other way round. So there are perspectives, there are worldviews which are presented to you, which are, you know, uh, sent to you and you are consuming the discourse. So the layout and the placement of the image is also significant in that they each convey a certain information, values, as well as communicate salience of the message to the reader. The image of Michael Obama is centrally placed on the page so as to be most eye-catching. It occupies the whole page, dominating it in a way, in a way which gives weight to the image. It is centrally fra framed with the text showing how they belong together, the meaning of Michael Obama. So look at this picture taken from a magazine and look at her eyes, that how she has been displayed. Look at the posture, the kind of angle, the kind of perspective, how it is shot and what kind of things, okay, it is communicating to you. The hairstyle, the color of the eyes, Okay, and the smile on her face, all these things are conveying a message. All these things are conveying meaning to you. So in multimodality, another concept that we need to understand is the concept of genre. Uh, about genre, someday we will talk about. Levon discusses the relationship between speech acts and genre in relation to multimodality using these two notions to capture the how versus the what of multimodal communication. So this I have already talked about because genre it has got internal and external structures. So we know that what is the claim and what kind of evidence we are bringing in to support our claims. So this is the internal structure. 
and there is the outer structure for example all the yondras they have got stages so yondras are used to get the job done so stage by stage step by step we you know obtain we obtain our goals so some of the questions are very important for example they are raised by cress and levon what meaning is being made in a text how is meaning being made in the text what resources have been drawn on to make the meaning in the text in what social environment is the meaning being made whose interest and agency is at work in the making of the meaning so as a researcher as an analyst your job is to answer these questions to see that how the authors how the text producers how the speakers they are producing the discourse from what perspective they are producing the discourse what kind of similes and metaphors they are making use of and then what kind of sounds songs symbols play cards colors and video images they are displaying they are showing to you and the job of the analyst is first of all that he or she should have full command on the other modalities which are being used in that text if you do not know that how the other modalities they work what are the meanings of the color red for example it can show a bloodshed it can show love so you need to know the meanings of all these resources of all these modalities and then you need to see that how they are being combined how they are being used how they are being manipulated to produce meaning in combination with all these resources which are being used by the author and i have already talked about that speech act theory we have got elocutionary force and perlocutionary force so we need to understand that what was the intention of the producer of the text and what is the intention and how you are going to understand how you are going to understand the message which is given by the text so look at this advertisement it has got a locutionary act new fair and lovely our best ever formula for our best ever fairness treatment so all girls they want to become or they want to look beautiful and white color is considered that it's a good color so look at the picture half girl she is having fair white complexion and half you know of the image it has got darker complexion so it shows that if you use this you know cream so after just 4 weeks you will have good results so this it has got elocutionary act and if you go to the market and you buy it so it means that you have acted on the perlocutionary force before and after so an advertisement may aim to persuade a person to buy a particular product the elocutionary act and if the person is convinced and he buys the product so this is the effect or the perlocutionary act we should also remember multimodal discourse analysis it has got its limitations as well first of all time is very important okay it it requires a lot of time on the part of the researcher on the part of the analyst that how much time he is going to spend secondly the researcher should have very good knowledge of the modes which have been used by the text producer for example he or she should know because the page can be of a4 size or a5 size so the text producer has got limitations on the same page he is supposed to produce the text he is supposed to produce the sound he is supposed to produce the image and the kind of colors which are being used over there all these things very systematically and very carefully have been used by the text producer so the job of the analyst is not easy so the researcher should know all the modalities very well and then he or she can be in a position to understand that how the text is produced and 
this is how you are supposed to analyze the text thank you very much